So in easy watercolour landscape tutorial one tonight, we're just going to be doing a very simple landscape that involves some warm and cool colours. So the first thing I need to do is just mix up my yellow ochre. That's one of the colours I'm going to be using tonight. So I've just got my hog's hair bristle brush and I've just sprayed some water in a couple of hours ago to just make sure that it had time to sink down inside and as you can see it's quite a, a thick mix and because we're going to be applying this paint onto the paper wet in wet then we want it to be a nice thick mix uh, so that was the yellow ochre that I'm mixing up next one is oh I didn't wash my brush out properly Sometimes when I finish washing out my brush, I get a tissue and between washes so that I can get out a lot of pigment out of the heel of the brush because that's where it's stuck in there. You can kind of see that it's, there's a bit of pigment stuck in that brush there. Sometimes between mixes, it's just worth working a bit hard, treating that brush very poorly to just until it runs clear. Beautiful. So this raw umber, this is Windsor and Newton raw umber, beautiful colour. Um, could have had a bit longer to sit, but that's okay. We'll just leave that like that. It's lovely. It's that one. Might just put a nice bit of a tissue down there. There we go. This is burnt umber. So we've had yellow ochre, raw umber, a bit of burnt umber. And then I'll just mix up a bit of cerulean blue and then we'll be good to go. There we go. That's excellent. I'll just use my other mixing brush that I use for cool colours to do the cerulean blue. And as you can see on the cerulean blue, there's a bit of um, oil on the top. And I suppose it's because cerulean blue is a little bit, it seems to be a bit hydrophobic, like it just seems to need a little bit of oil and it seems a bit chalky otherwise. So that's why I don't know about the making process of all of these, but um, they obviously need to add a bit of that in to uh, enable it to be a, a usable colour. sky colour, beautiful light blue. So because I'm just going to be doing a small scale watercolour tonight, I don't need to spend ages mixing up all the bottom of that. And I'll just move that off to the side. And of course, you don't need bowls of wash that size, okay? You can use bowls of wash the, the size that I was using before, like that sort of size is totally fine more manageable than those large bowls and, and those large bowls are, are not really necessary unless you're wanting to dip a large brush into them so so let's get started so the paper I'm using tonight is just Saunders Watford it's 300 GSM uh, white cold pressed just uh, you don't need to use this but I just use would use any cold pressed medium uh, 300 GSM paper, so and it's about half A4, and then I've taped it down using this Scotch Magic tape. But again, you could use any tape you want. Anything that I use in this, in any of my painting tutorials, will be in the description to below, so you can find out what those things are. We'll just get started. The first thing I'm going to do is just wet the whole page with this hake brush, and this hake brush lately has been losing a few hairs, but bit like me probably. So we're just going to wet the whole page, get a bit more water, wet the whole page, make sure it's nice and wet. If you think it's too wet, you can flick your brush out and take a little bit of water off. So we've wet that whole page nicely, and then we're just going to load up a little bit of yellow ochre 
on our hake brush and then we're just going to just think about just bringing in a bit of that for the, the sky. So when you're doing this you don't have to be too exact you can just start to lay it down on the page and just see what it ends up doing on the page. Lovely. And then what I might do going to use a little bit of a mix of winds of blue winds of blue red shade and light red This landscape, of course, could be anything. We could. I'm just doing some random strokes on this page and, and using a few simple colors. And if we wanted to, we could really build up some complexity and depth 
Uh, we could, you know, do some detailing. You know, we could start to create what we were thinking it looked like. You know, in terms of we could, we could even just. And of course, I could do some of this when it was a bit drier. Start to create a little bit of detail. Often detail is best put in when it's dry really, but this is just a very simple exercise. It's just creating a little bit of depth. Um, we could even start to uh, create a little bit of movement from the foreground, you know, we could create a little bit of depth here. So the beautiful thing about wet in wet is you can start to just create that feeling of water and the movement on the water really easily and, and if you're working from an actual photograph you could just start to squint your eyes and work out where are those real lights that I want to really capture. Where is that light really hitting the water and really create some light lights there. And then you could really come in with some detail. Just keep doing some detail of some sticks coming out of, out of the river like at Kangaroo Valley or lot, lots of other things but I think overall this is just a good simple exercise to do with some wet in wet, use some yellow ochre, 
put in a bit of cerulean blue, you add some warms. So you've got some warms and cools, and obviously generally things are warmer when they're closer, cooler when they're further away. And it's just good to have some areas of cool and warm and, and then mixtures of those. And you just play around with that idea uh, a, a lot. You could add in some detail, but I think initially it's just good not to try and have too much detail and just close your eyes and step back and just see if that gives you an idea of some water and some light and some space and, and that sort of thing. So. Uh, Of course, if, once you finish the painting, uh, the important thing to do is to just dry it off. So I'll, I'll just do that right now. So that's, that's the end of this very simple exercise. We mainly used the uh, two inch hake brush. We used the uh, flat nylon. We used a little bit of this round sable here, very small round sable. We used this little pocket knife here. Um, and we used a very, very small amount of this round sable, but not really. So it's a very simple exercise and you could play around with the colours that you use and those sorts of things. So thanks for joining me tonight. This is tutorial one. There's going to be five of them. So if you'd like to know about when I publish the next one, then uh, click the subscribe button and click the bell button. And, and thanks for joining me tonight and thanks to all my subscribers. I really appreciate everyone tuning in. And hopefully this, these lessons help you to really gain a love of watercolour because it's a beautiful medium that can really do some beautiful things on the page once you learn about how that medium behaves. So let's, let's uh, keep going. Thanks for joining me tonight and I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.